Fine. Uh, so we'll try to cover the entire syllabi, and uh, uh, of course, if required, uh, much more than the syllabi. Okay. You can find all my videos, uh, you know, uploaded on YouTube channel. Fine. What all uh, the lectures that are going to happen uh, in our, uh, you know, classroom, uh, which are being edited and uh, uploaded in this YouTube channel. From here also, you can. Rather listen at your free time if you have missed the class or any doubts are unable to concentrate during the class, you can uh, uh, revisit and then you can listen the classes. Uh, then you can uh, you can come back to me with uh, uh, with your doubts and all right. So here uh, you can see um, uh, C on C programming. Also, I have uh, you know a good number of videos available here. Uh, those who are uh, you know. Having certain doubts are not familiar, or could not, uh, you know, get uh, you know, uh, abreast with the C concepts and all. Those uh, people can rather go through uh, the C videos here. Session-wise videos are available. So you can see here. <coughs> this is session four, programming for problem solving. Uh, this is the subject. You can see. Uh, programming for problem solving is the uh, first year. Uh, see, I think you may have already, uh, you know, completed it in first semester, right? So those videos are also available here. So session wise, you can uh, visit these uh, videos, uh, listen, and then probably uh, you can have a refresh of uh, what you have studied in uh, last semester, right? So that uh, uh, when we are, you know, taking on C plus uh, plus, it will be quite helpful for you. Uh, to understand, uh, you know, the C++ concepts because uh, what are C uh, you have studied in, rather it's all there again in C++. Uh, it's just an addition of uh, oops to the existing C, right? C, if you see C++, C++, in the name itself, you can see C uh, incrementation. C++ means increment of C, rather, right? So what all you have in C? All those concepts are retained in C++ with OOPS concepts uh, you, know, you can see in C++. Right? So addition of OOPS you can find uh, you know in C++. So uh, those who have uh, rather you know uh, could not uh, concentrate in, in last semester art, those who have rather done it well as well to refresh you can just go through these videos. Uh, concepts uh, are available. Uh, you know, as well, uh, concept wise uh, videos are also available. Here, actually, uh, you can find programming languages. Programming languages is a subject uh, probably you would have studied in second year, uh, which covers all programming paradigms. Actually, we have functional, logical, you know, object oriented, uh, uh, we have fun uh, um, Structural and uh, we have concurrent programming, uh, you know, and uh, uh, we have logical programming. So you know the different programming paradigms that are available uh, that are being discussed in these programming languages. So those programming languages videos are also available here, uh, and the concept-wise videos are also available, right? Introduction to prog functional programming, functional programming part one, two, three, and logical programming. You know, concurrent programming, you know, uh, C uh, under which particular programming paradigm C comes under? C comes under, uh, you know, structural, um, imperative, okay, programming languages. Whereas C comes under object oriented programming, right? Paradigm. So on object-oriented programming paradigm as well, you have a couple of videos available, object-oriented programming system, part one, part two, part three you have. So in object-oriented programming system, what are different concepts? Like, you know, you have <clears throat> uh, encapsulation, polymorphism, inheritance, exception. So on all such concepts, uh, you know, uh, you have videos available, exception handling videos available, and you can find, uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, Sub programs, these functions and all, right? So, uh, it, this is uh, from the uh, generic point of view, uh, you know, uh, covering 
all programming languages. What all programming languages that you have, uh, you know, uh, across the entire computer, you know, community, rather, right? <clears throat> Which was started uh, right from the first language, uh, you know, uh, invented, uh, named after Ada on the first kind of computer, Abacus, right? Uh, by Charles Babbage, right? Charles Babbage is the father of the computer. We generally call it as uh, he was the invention. He he uh, he has invented the first kind of computer called Abacus, right? So, and with the first programming language was uh, you know <clears throat> uh, written by uh, Ada, uh, named after her. Uh, the language also named after her is called Ada, right? So then uh, we have a lot of programming languages came into being. Uh, uh, and these all programming languages have been classified under uh, you know, different uh, category. So the taxonomy of the programming languages, uh, you know, we generally uh, do it by using these programming paradigms. So different programming paradigms which are being discussed here, like, you know, as I said, uh, functional programming, logical programming, object-oriented programming, fine. So imperative kind, all this, you know, that you find. So uh, you have videos starting from, uh, uh, you know, the, all such kind of thing available in, the, in my uh, YouTube channel. Uh, then how to write the uh, programming, uh, I mean, the language designers, how they develop, how they write the compilers, how they write the uh, all programming constructs uh, to make it available for the user using the uh, system programming languages. You now, for which, of course, the uh, what kind of syntax, semantics, and grammar that they probably follow, all that also is being discussed in these videos. You can see language categories and uh, implementations. This is one video, and uh, this is my one of the you know videos which is being discussed on data structure on the whole. You know, just to give you the gist of data structure. The video which is available here and programming and environment what are the different environment you need some tools or uh, you know environments right IDD tools that you probably adopt in order to implement your programming language like uh, you have turbo editor or more line editor you have uh, linux vi joe kind of thing or you know uh, edit plus or you know different kind of environments here what kind of programming are available introduction to programming languages concepts of programming languages Syntax and semantics, you know, how the language designer define the syntax and semantics for the, the, the programming constructs so while they are developing the programming languages and what kind of grammar they follow, uh, the renowned uh, grammars which are available like BNF, CNF, and all, and uh, you know, uh, they, they are being discussed here. And uh, while well, uh, you know, using the grammar, what kind of difficulties that you will probably find, uh, like ambiguity, uh, ambiguity kind of thing, you know. Which is being solved through uh, what do you call uh, non ambiguity. So that they're also discussed here. You can see, and operators, precedences, uh, you know, we have operators, uh, you know, uh, what kind of operators are being offered by any programming language. In, in a more generic way, what kind of operators are available, uh, being discussed here. And uh, of course, when you have multiple operators in the same expression, how they are going to evaluate some kind of precedence rule. So the precedence rules are also discussed here. You can see the semantics uh, and the attribute grammar, right? There are certain things for which you need uh, to define uh, with certain rules, right? For which, of course, you need some attribute grammar. So that is also being discussed here. You can see is a review on programming languages I have taken uh, for the entire unit one. And, uh, data types, what are the different data types that are offered across different programming languages are discussed here. We're taking few languages uh, into consideration as an example by discussing, I have taken it. You can go through all these videos uh, which are available, which are all related to programming languages only, right? These all reference data types, for reference data we have a separate uh, video available, arrays, we have separate video, regards, you know, our structures, and then, uh, you know, all this. Uh, for all concepts, uh, uh, all different concepts of the programming languages uh, of entire programming languages community, uh, we have uh, videos available on my video channel. You can probably go through these uh, you know, uh, videos uh, that helps you to understand any other programming language.
right? Uh, it could be uh, uh, the latest uh, Python. Python is a scripting actually, right? That comes under script based, which, which is an object uh, based, of course, rather, right? Uh, and, uh, you can see Perl, uh, you have uh, Perl is a program, practical extraction decoding language. Uh, you know, uh, like you have JavaScript, PGP script, Action script, or uh, you have shell, bon, con, uh, you have you know, all this uh, basically uh, uh, scripting language. And what all the languages that have been used on the internet, they are all scripting languages, right? right? Python, uh, PHP, uh, you take uh, JavaScript, uh, Node Java. Uh, no GS, you call it this, right? It is <clears throat> for uh, internet, uh, for uh, server side scripting. Actually, JavaScript was invented only for client side, but now uh, uh, Node uh, no JS has been uh, in, uh, you know, invented for server side, and uh, people can use the same kind of syntax to write uh, program it both client side and client. Okay. So, uh, all this, uh, of course, they're all script based, right? They're all scripting languages. They, 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 Comes under one category. They're, they're all interpreter based, right? All scripting languages are interpreter based. Okay, you may have studied in C language, uh, probably at the early stages. That you know, uh, all these languages uh, which uh, we probably uh, you know uh, implement uh, on computer uh, with the help of some translator. Yes, sir. If you look at the difference between C and C++ is there is one major difference that you can find between C and C++ is C will have functions, right? There is a main function without which you, of course, uh, cannot execute any task, right? So you can see. In addition to main, there can be any number of functions. Okay, all those functions which you have written in addition to main, they are rather invoked in the main, right? Because the execution starts from main and terminates from main. Yes, sir. So, where you can see uh, the entire program consists of some functions, right? I can say it's a function oriented kind, right? Yes, sir. So, the C programming, right, is functional, a uh, functional based, right? Yes. Whereas when you come to C plus plus, right, you find classes. You find classes. Okay. What is the class here? Class is an encapsulation of data and functions okay fine so this class concept comes from encapsulation fine here i'm defining encapsulation as a wrapping up of data and functions together in a single entity or class is known as data encapsulation, right? Wrapping. What do you mean by wrapping? When you wrap a cover to some box and all kind of thing, it's covering. Wrapping means covering. So covering the data and functions together into a single entity called a class is known as encapsulation, right? So this encapsulation concept is a concept, rather, right? So how it has been implemented with the help of class concept, right? So this class, I can say it is an ADT, right? Abstract data type. Okay. Abstract data type. What do you mean by abstract data type? 
you have studied different data types available in C language, right? What are the different data types that you have studied in uh, C language? Can any one of you list? Yes, you can write here. Yes, what are the different data types? Eight, cat, you have written some. Double float. Yes. Fine. Yes, double. Float, yeah. And someone has written here, someone has written structure. What is structure? Things are different data types. Yeah, it is a collection of heterogeneous data types, right? So, using structure to what you can define structure, uh, you can define a student structure like uh, consisting of student rule number, student name. Right? So if you see structure consists of certain numbers, right? Number, rule number, this is rule number, this is mark names, this is these are marks, right? So <clears throat> you can see here certain members carrying some data, right? Of student. Right. So, this structure, student structure carrying some data, right? So, if I say just a student, see when I am uh, creating a member of this uh, student, how do you create a, a member of the uh, student structure? You say struct student s. This is, this is how you create a variable of student type. So when you just say s, s is what? A student kind. But student consists of these are the members, right? These members, these members are hidden inside this student, yes or no? This full number, marks and name, these are hidden inside the student. How do I access those numbers? S dot number s dot name s dot mark yes, this is how I access it right uh, this dot is a membership operator you call it as right so which will help you to access the members of that particular structure yes sir but until then it is hidden yes sir so this hiding of the data inside this particular data type is said to be the abstraction. What do you, what do you mean by abstraction basically? Abstraction is nothing but hiding. Hiding the non-essential data. Okay. You want to see only student kind, that's it, right? Student is one uh, record, you can say, rather way out, you can see is a structure consisting of certain data members. Fine. But for the user, you are giving an instance of a student. The same student is yes, sir. If you want 10 students, it's of 10, you say, right? As an array. 
they are hiding the members inside this particular so then i can say this structure is also a abstract data yes sir so similarly if you see the class class consists of what class consists of data and the functions right if i have let us say a student class student class can consists of some student data such as student roll number marks and student name right then i can have some functions like to read the data and to print the data right now this class i am calling it as a a b t abstract data because it is hiding it is hiding the data and the functions from the user because for the user when he is going to implement how does he implement he will create an instance of this particular class right student is the class name right student space s so this s is nothing but an object here right it's a variable of of course student kind but i am calling it as an object right so what do you mean by object it is an instance of a class what is a class i have already given a couple of definitions class is an addtv set abstract data type consisting of data and members yes sir we can give one definition of that kind and you can say it is a blueprint of an object yes sir It is a blueprint of an object. I can say. Okay. Right. Or if I have to give another definition to the discussion that I have made before, I can say it is an ADT abstract data type. It is also a user-defined data type, right? It is ADT. You can say it is a user-defined data type also. Why? Because you can create your own with the help of this yes or no it is an abt or user defined data type why do you use this basically to maintain the record sequence right what what it consists of consists of data and functions yes or no what is the major advantage of using class tell me to maintain the records yes or no see when you are studying something you will have to know what is its application why is it basically required right what is its use fine so class is being used to Maintain the records. Records of what? Records of you know student, employee, you know bank account. You can create any kind of record which you want to store permanently, right? The other way around, I can say the information, right? The information which you want to store permanently, right? you can see in business all business will have some records right fine with the help of which you can probably know the past history yes or no so 
all your data sets they are carrying some records yes or no right so they can be here together as an entity can be represented as a class right so the entire thing here being represented as a what class so that class again i am calling it as a data yes or no so that is the reason why <clears throat> the major difference that i was talking about of c++ from c is you know where c was functional based or you know the functional oriented whereas c++ is data oriented right so before the object oriented programming system came into being right the programming languages were procedural based right procedural based or functional based right c is also a procedure based or functional based right then after the object oriented programming system came into being the data based or data oriented programming languages came into being right data oriented all object oriented programming systems are data oriented right you can find only data right like you can see the uh, java if you probably look at java are you look at smart talk are you look at cybase you know are you look at c hash right what are tools that are available like uh, most of the object based kind of thing like you know you see what all you can see in internet uh, you know domain all internet based programming language they're all object based right so all these if you see they're all data oriented right data oriented look at java you find only classes right Find so how these classes are being implemented by instantiating, right? How do you instantiate? Instantiation of the uh, class is nothing but an object, right? So with the help of object, you implement, right? So implementation of class is going to be done with the help of objects, right? You can find in Java all the programming constructs that you find. but being encapsulated inside the classes you can find only classes right so classes and objects right where class i am calling it as class or object is nothing but data i am calling it as listen this is the data so this how it is data oriented right so we have taken a sharp you know transition into the data oriented era after once the object oriented programming system came into be right before that we were in functional based right a functional oriented right okay so you may have not got the basic difference between the c and c++ but if you look at you know in c++ in c++ though it was the period uh of uh moving into the data oriented era from functional or procedural kind the users that time were not still acquainted with uh, this new era that's the reason why c++ the person who has invented journeys cross top Charles Schwab, right? He is a person. He has invented somewhere around in 1980s, right? 1985 round. Uh, we're just adding oops to C and Z, right? Thinking that uh, all C lovers and C users should be able to use this C plus plus, right? He doesn't want to miss any one of the C users from using C++. That's the reason why he doesn't change the syntax of C. What all C you have, keeping the entire thing as it is, fine. 
just added the oops concepts at the same time he has retained the functional based concept as well in c++ that's the reason why you can find c++ is a mix of this both right fine in c++ you find there is a main function very similar to that of your uh, c you find a main function from where the execution start and terminates right in addition to main you will be having either functions or classes right you have functions and classes it means without uh, you know classes as well functions you can still have it in c++ right or you can have combination of both functions and then separately classes right so keeping in view of the c users uh he has retain the functional oriented concept in data oriented when he was taking a transition to and data oriented concepts as well right so you can find the simple functions right like how you have it in c and you can have classes their classes consists of again data and functions that you know right and then there is a main function right then there is a main function like how you have it in c right so this is how the uh, skeleton of uh, any you can find uh, the c++ right skeleton of c++ program to serve functions classes and there is a main function again here you can see there is a main function without which you can't say a program right like how you know, main was made mandatory in c similarly in c++ as well main is made as mandatory right the execution of any program will start and terminate from main only right so if you have functions and some classes written before main or after you will have to invoke all of them here in the main right so implementation of this will take place from the main only got it i hope this is clear to all of you right the implementation of functions and classes if you have in addition to main they all have to be implemented only through main because the execution will start from main and terminates from main right is it clear to all of you yes sir yes sir difference between c and c++ i hope it is clear yeah so we were uh, discussing about oops concepts right so in oops we said these are the three concepts right when any programming language is exhibiting then you say it is a is an object oriented program yes or no what are they encapsulation inheritance and polymer encapsulation we have seen right we were discussing so far is encapsulation how we were able to uh, implement encapsulation with the help of class concept yes sir what do you mean by encapsulation wrapping up of data and functions together into a single entity and that is possible with the help of class and object right and what is a class class is an entity or a user defined data type right or you can say is a blueprint of an object right but what it consists of it consists of data and functions right and what is an object it is an instance of a class right it is a it is an implementable model of class when you say class is a generic kind and the uh, object is an implement of the kind right to give you a very clarified uh, you know difference between class and object is something like ma car and maruti right car is a generic kind yes or no do you find named after car as car no 
or is just a theory right it's an abstraction right is an idiot yes or no that is just an abstraction right it, it specifies how car looks like but then you don't have an implementable one of that kind with the same name rather, right but you have maruti car maruti company people have inherited this or have used this you know theory and have implemented and named after their company called maruti right ambassador ambassador people have you know implemented the same car car similarly when you say class is a car maruti is an option yes or no i hope this is clear to all of you If you have any doubts, you can probably raise here. Uh, we have short of time; five minutes are left. I want all of you to please type your rule number in the chat box, please. Those who have already written comments, that's fine. Those who have not written any comments, please type your rule number. That will be taken as your attendance. Okay. Sir, so, do you have any C++ lab, sir? Uh, you're not clear. Can, can you repeat it? Uh, C++ lab, sir. Do you have any lab? Sir? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. We do have lab. Uh, I will uh, explain you all the programs through a tool. Okay, by sharing my screen, you can probably see uh, typing of the program and execution of it. I will show, I will demonstrate all the programs uh, by sharing the same. And uh, I want the same thing from your side because I do give some assignments, and these assignments uh, you will have to implement. Okay, and uh, you will have to execute those programs and uh, share your screen and show me. uh if you have any errors or if you have executed correctly or whatever it may be you have to share and show me right so probably in next session i will uh, discuss regarding lab okay yes ma'am so those who have not written any comments please type your rule number will be taken as your attendance okay i hope all of you have written the roll number in the chat box right okay if there are no doubts shall we end the class Is all of you please type your rule numbers in the chat box before leaving? To be taken as the attendance. Thank you, sir. All of you, have, all of you have typed your rule number. Yes, sir. Shall I close the recording? Because when recording is on, only then the rule numbers will be recorded which you are typing. Shall I stop recording? Uh, hoping that all of you have typed your number and stopping the recording.